Now I have the function g to x equals 2x cubed minus 9x squared. If I were to graph this function, I'd like to factor that if possible. I notice that both of these terms have an x squared, so this equals x squared times 2x minus 9, and I can find the x-intercepts very easily once I factor. Um, g to x equals 0 when x equals 0, so I'd have the point zero zero. And then if I plug in the number four, hat, four and a half, I'd also get zero. 4.5 comma zero. And notice with the point zero zero, that also gives me my y-intercept. So I have that. So I have these two points on the graph. Find the critical points. Take the derivative. So the derivative of 2x cubed minus 9x squared is 6x squared minus 18x. I'm going to factor. I want to factor. Both of these terms have a 6 and an x as a common factor. So I'm going to factor out 6x. The first term is left with an x. The second term is a negative 3. 6x times x minus 3 equals 0 when x equals 0 or x equals 3. Two things multiplied together can't equal 0 unless one of them actually is equal to 0. So the only time we get 0 is at 0 and 3. Those are our critical points. I don't have a fraction or a square root involved, so my derivative always exists. First derivative test. Draw the number line, put your critical points on the number line. I have 0 and 3, and then I picked my test points. A number less than 0, I picked negative 1. Factoring is key. When I plug in negative 1, I have 6 times negative 1 times a negative 1 minus 3. Notice I have a positive number times a negative number times another negative number. Positive times negative times negative ends up being positive. It is not important that the actual number is 24. What is important is whether we're positive or negative, and that's where factoring is going to save us some work. If I plug in a number between 0 and 3, like the number 1, I'd have a positive 6 times a positive 1 times a negative 2. Positive times positive times negative is negative. So I know that we are decreasing in this region, and I forgot to draw an increasing here. And then in the last one, pick a number that's to the right of 3, and I plugged in 4. I have 6 times 4 times 4 minus 3. Positive, positive, positive factor. The product is positive, so we're increasing. If I wanted to draw a picture of what this is going to look like, I know that it's going to be increasing up until I reach 0, then decreasing until I reach 3, which I don't know exactly where that is, but it's somewhere down here, and then we're going to increase after we reach 3. And so this is a general sketch of what the graph would look like. I know that it needs to be increasing until I reach 0, decreasing until I reach 3, and then increasing, and I have to pass through those points. One final example. h at x equals x squared minus 4 to the 2 thirds power. Another way to write this, it's going to be more handy with the two-thirds power, but this is the same thing as the cube root of x squared minus 4 squared. Okay, let's find our critical points. h prime of x is power rule with the chain rule. Two-thirds 
x squared minus 4 to the negative 1 third times the derivative of x squared minus 4, which is 2x. When I simplify this, canceling um, like factors, you see I wasn't doing a very good job here, h prime of x equals 4x divided by 3 times x squared minus 4 to the 1 third power. When does h prime of x equals 0? Well, that means I have 0 equals 4x divided by 3 times x squared minus 4 to the 1 third power. A fraction only equals 0 if the numerator is 0, and that happens only when x equals when x is 0. h prime of x is undefined. That would be, I have a fraction here, when the denominator is equal to 0. So that would be when x squared minus 4 to the 1 third power times 3 equals 0. Now we're just doing algebra. Divide both sides by 3. Cube both sides. We have x squared minus 4 equals 0. That means x squared equals 4 which means the absolute value of x equals 2, so x equals 2 or negative 2, and our critical points are negative 2, 0, and 3. You also may notice that I have a cube root of x squared minus 4. When I think about this domain, when does the cube root make sense? Well, the cube root makes sense whether my input is positive numbers or negative numbers. So this always exists. Our problem was that it was in the denominator, and I don't want my denominator to ever equal 0. So our critical points are negative 2, 0, and 2. So let's try and do the first derivative test. I just wrote down my function and the derivative, which it's missing a 4 in it. Um, here's my number line. My critical points were negative 2, 0, and 2. And all I did was plug in numbers that were in these intervals. So starting to the left of negative 2, I plugged in negative 3. And so my numerator is actually negative 3. 12, and my denominator, when I plug in my stuff, I really don't care what those numbers are. I care whether it's positive or negative. So my numerator is negative. The 3 is a positive factor. This is going to be a 9 minus 4, and then taking its cube root, that's still a positive number. So I have a negative divided by the product of positive and positive. So this is negative. So we're decreasing in that first interval. Between negative 2 and 0, I'll plug in negative 1. The numerator is negative 4. The denominator has a positive factor and a negative factor. So we have a negative divided by a negative, which is positive, which means we're increasing. If I plug in positive 1, my numerator is positive 4. My denominator has a positive 3 as a factor. And then I'm going to have 1 squared minus 3, which is negative. When I take its cube root, it's still negative. So I have a positive divided by a negative, which is negative. So we're decreasing between 0 and 2. And then we are increasing when I plug in a number that's bigger than 2. I picked 3. You could pick your favorite number. And we get a positive divided by the product of two positives. And so we would be um, increasing. from negative infinity to, oops, sorry. We're increasing from negative 2 to 0 and from 2 to infinity. And we are decreasing from negative infinity to negative 2 and 0 to 2. Okay increasing and decreasing. The key to these problems to make our life easier is factoring.